on in and let me show you around. <laughs> this is the start of William and Catherine here. I've uh, actually framed these myself. I'm not very good at sewing and knitting, but picture framing I do like. So these are 12 quite modern pictures of them. It was my dining room table, but it is now the main area for William and Margaret Catherine. Tyler runs a bed and breakfast in London like no other. A house filled with 10,000 royal memorabilia items, including a room dedicated to the late Princess Diana. I was wearing this rosette and she saw it and she threw back her head and laughed and she said, oh, you have got it bad. <laughs> in Windsor, she did a walkabout. Simply put, Margaret loves the royal family. Well, it's almost an extension of my own family. <clears throat> I mean, I've got four children and four grandchildren, so I've got quite a big family. Um, but th there's such a charisma about them, I think, about the, everything they do. You know, it goes back years, doesn't it? I mean, the monarchy's been there a jolly long time, and they've done a pretty good job. So, you know, if it, if, why change it? Why change the monarchy? especially when you have a royal wedding that will be watched by some two billion people worldwide, a wedding expected to bring a fresh and modern look to an institution which dates back a thousand years. The British monarch is the head of state, a role that for the last century is largely ceremonial with little political power. Journalist Yasmin Alibi Brown has met most of the royal family, nothing personal, but she doesn't like what the monarchy represents. The idea underpinning it, that anybody born into this family automatically is elevated to above the rest of the humanity of this island. This is a principle that many nations got rid of, including and also the, their aristocracy while they were at it, in some in the 18th century. In India, as soon as India became independent, they got rid of their, 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 their kings and maharajas. It did not fit with an equal India. In this country, they have never questioned the principle enough. So the principle really offends my sense of equality and a meritocracy. An institution based on birthright and not merit. It's one of the anti-royalist main arguments as to why it should be abolished. But then why is the monarchy still so popular? Peter Whittle is author of Monarchy Matters. He says the Queen's popularity rating is over 80% and three quarters of the population support the monarchy as an institution. The strengths of the monarchy are negative ones. It's what it it doesn't allow other people to have it. It's what it denies people. Some of the worst things you can call a, uh, a prime minister in this country is that he is acting like a president. So, for example, uh, Tony Blair was frequently accused of this. He was sort of getting above himself. You're just a politician, you know. Well, you know, you're not all powerful. Well, of course, in technical terms, he was all-powerful, but there was a figure above which sort of represented the whole constitution to which he had to give allegiance, you know? And this is, I think, terribly important. This is the headquarters of the Republic Movement, a group which has seen a rise in membership, thanks in part to the overkill of media coverage since the royal engagement was announced. Graham Smith argues an apolitical figurehead such as the Queen does more damage than good to the democratic process. The head of state herself, you know, is essentially pointless. She, she's a puppet. She only does what the Prime Minister uh, tells her to do. So what we really want is a... Um, we want to get rid of the Crown, which is the source of power, and uh, make the people the source of the power. So in short, have a constitution that says people are in charge, there's limits on what politicians can do, and we have an elected and effective head of state, someone who is independent of the Prime Minister, not making political decisions, but making constitutional decisions. So, in other words, if we put the limits on their power, Prime Minister tries to step over the line, President can step in and say no. So it's just more democratic. More democratic, but also less expensive. The anti-monarchy voice accuses the royal family of costing British taxpayers more than 180 million euros per year. 
But at this historic men's club in the heart of London, Jacobs Arnold disagrees. He says Crown Estates generate money, they pay taxes, and presidents don't attract tourists. Look at what other countries do for a head of state. Take Germany, which has a similar parliamentary system with a president. Uh, th their presidency, based on two palaces, one in Berlin, for instance, uh, costs twice going on three times as much uh, as the British monarchy costs. Uh, staff of 170 in Berlin alone, uh, and of course the costs of former presidents with their pensions and offices. So certainly our monarchy is no more expensive than any other head of state. And of course if you then go into systems like France or, or the United States where the head of state is also head of government, it's vastly more expensive. So the, the financial arguments really don't stack up. Financial, political or ethical arguments aside, there's little doubt the upcoming royal wedding has helped lift the national mood. Even the country's anti-monarchists, who have about a 20% support rating, admit that whether good or bad, the monarchy represents Britain's history and its national identity. this country they really are very very conservative people and any idea of big change kind of they can't cope with which is why they can't go into Europe properly which is why they can't get rid themselves of the remnants of imperial feelings you know they are very conservative people but we are now into the 21st century we are a very talented nation. Surely it's time to think that we, would, we need a different kind of stability, not one that is a kind of dependency, if you like, on an old world. Um, I ad really admire uh, British people. I cannot understand their dependency on royalty. I think the monarchy can survive because it's been uh, written off, it's been talked of as going, uh, about once every decade for the past 150 years. Um, so it's quite extraordinary that not only has it existed until now, and, uh, but that it's existed in a, a very popular form. Um, there is no real movement uh, to replace it, no popular movement. Uh, republicanism comes and goes, you know, and there's apathy, but then usually, when it comes to it, people tend to want this system. Wanting the monarchy. While not everyone might agree, the idea that it will be around long into the 21st century is, of course, good news for people like Margaret. Say that's what the wedding dress will look like, but I'm not sure that is it. But this, I think William will wear a uniform. I do think so, don't you? Mm -hmm.